Okay, I wanted to take a quick second and talk about uh, <clears throat> excuse me, talk about how do we make a water plane? Right, we, we've had some questions about like how do you do like a simple water shader? And so for stills, I want to show you some some quick cheats. So first I'm gonna drop in an environment light. And uh, for our map, I'm just gonna come in here and I'm gonna grab out of Houdini's uh, and I'm just gonna use their their noon. I like this map. It's got a lot of lighting kind of built into it already, which I think adds for some some really cool visual interest. Uh, we see there's some problems with some normals on the mega scan asset. That's fine. We're gonna we're gonna ignore that for now. So what do we do with this water plane? Okay, so I've got I've got a couple of assets in here, and I've got a grid that represents the water. And this asset here goes underneath the water, and so we want to see what we can do with this. So first things first, I'm just gonna come in and I'm gonna drop down a principal shader. And now on this material, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to sign that principled shader. And look at my material network. And there's my principled shader. And there we go. So there. So now we've got this gray shader. Well, what can we do with this? Well, I mean, you could go the easy route and we could just pick a preset and say, okay, well, why don't we just make this like glass, right? Water's like glass. And there you go. So now we have glass right where this is trying to be re reflective and refractive but we run into some issues with this we run into issues with um one this can be expensive if your machine is is slow um but let's take a look like some of the things we can do is one it's all dark underneath here like we see that there's really nothing kind of projecting down below this we can see the geometry underneath there and then we see our our environment map uh, as well so maybe i maybe i need to do something just let me let me pause the recording i'm going to add a little floor to our scene here um all right so now i've got you know the kind of an even distribution under there of there's a, a material that's uh, or a, a half dome underneath there that has a sphere so we can kind of see what's going on so this already kind of has some interesting stuff going on for it we have refraction turned on and it's refracting things, but we don't really see down into the water. So, you know, what do we do with that? We're going to come back into our principled shader. I'm going to rename this water. Just to make it clear. And the first trick I always do is I turn on fake caustics. Okay. And what fake caustics do, you'll see already that water or that light is now moving through that surface, even though these, these areas are below um, the plane of the water we can still see them. So let me do this, let me get away from my camera. So, you know, here's that rocket, it's under that water plane. You know, if we go here to no lighting, we might see that a little better. We can see that where that's intersecting, right? So just that little tip of the rock is pointed out. But we see here now we've got all this light passing through that's giving us some, some uh, ability to see under the water. If we turn off that fake caustic, then no light is being refracted, and if we do this, we have to calculate photons, and a, you know, it's a much more complicated lighting scenario. This is a, a really easy hack to kind of make this work. So, uh, we look at this. We have some contouring here that helps us to, you know, create whether it's shadowing or not, um, and we'll worry about that later. So, next thing that I always do when I'm doing a simple water shader for a still is I will often just cheat right on this plane. I'll get I'm going to give it a little bit of um, displacement. And so I like to use alligator noise. Okay, and then the scale here is going to matter. Let's see what that scale is. That scale is really high frequency and it's too much. So we're going to say negative 0.05. And there we can see we're starting to break up that water, All right? We're getting a sense of some um, so the reason I like the negative uh, value in the alligator is because it creates little crests, right? It's kind of like a whirly pattern, uh, the alligator. And so it's these bumps. And so it gives you, you know, these, these little ridges. And so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make the frequency a lot lower as well. And there we start to see something that kind of starts to feel water-like, right? Especially over here, you know, that's pretty successful. I, I think I'm pretty happy with that. You know, we could play with this a bunch. You know, sometimes I'll stretch it in the X or the Z, 
to see if I can pull that out in one of those directions and make it feel like, you know, like waves that are moving in a certain direction. But for my purposes right now, this actually feels really nice. I really, I think I'm really happy with that, that the scale feels appropriate. When I come back here, this feels kind of big, that feels small. So I like that. So now the next thing is how do I deal with trying to make this have some better fall off? Like water's murky, you know, and like the, the, the energy of the water starts, starts to fall off as it goes through. If we did some bigger, more extreme wavelets, you'd see like more fractally patterns kind of happening under there um, with the fake caustic. Uh, you could get some stuff, but um, we're going to leave this as it is for now. I think it's okay. So I'm going to go back to surface and I'm going to come into my uh, transparency. Yeah, that's where I want to do this. So right now it's set to one, and then we have this transparency color. So here we add a color to our transparency, and we see that we've been able to create like a, a sense of light being uh, tinted by that transmission. Now, uh, I, distance will, will control like how fast that becomes saturated as it moves through that surface. Now, I was playing with this just for a second to kind of see if it was doing what I thought, and it wasn't quite doing what I thought, and I think that has to do with that this is a grid and not a closed object, but I'm not totally sure, but I don't really want to go down that rabbit hole right now, so usually what I'll do is I'll come in here and I'll just start playing with some of these values, you know, it's like that's too saturated, maybe it's a little too green, let's murk it up just a little bit, give it a color that feels a little better, All right, so that's starting to feel a little more natural as far as being like some skunky water. And then we just start kind of bringing down that intensity in the color and we start kind of getting some. There you go. So now we have a pretty simple water plane that gives us, you know, some transmission of light that gives some color to that transmission. And this is starting to feel, this is starting to feel pretty good as far as water goes. Like this would work for a still. Now, some scenes this wouldn't work and, you know, maybe we want like more fall off in this water you know, underneath. And so in that case, I would start using, um, instead of a plane, I would use like a grid or a box. And I would make that box a volume and render that volume uh, as phantom underneath the water. And you would get, you know, like graduation of this thing as it moves into that surface. So, but uh, there you go. There's a quick way to create uh, some interesting, believable water. Um, you know, if, if you're needing some oh, a water setup. Another thing that usually becomes interesting if this was, you know, you know, wavy or whatnot, you would want something that kind of gives you, um, you know, some breakup. Another thing that we could do is we could create, you know, uh, uh, some breakup on this water, right? So we go to our surface and we could do, let's see, let's do a global variable here. And then we're gonna do a turbulent noise. And 1D turbulent noise is what I want. Put that in position. And then I'm going to do a fit node. That way I can kind of control its min and max values easily. And I'm going to put this into roughness. And already you're seeing where this is starting to grab our surface color and it's making it more diffuse, right? So we're getting some diffuseness out of that, which I don't really want, right? Um, it, it, that, that wasn't, you know, necessarily the point of what I was looking for, but it, you know, it, or actually that's probably specular. Um, I misspoke. I don't have my, always have your control and just turn on so you can see that's probably specular right there. So, but I'm going to take this, this is alligator noise, frequency of one, which is similar to what we had, but I'm going to take this and change it from alligator. And I'm going to change this to um, to simplex noise. And now I'm going to fit this, which simplex, I believe goes negative to positive and I don't want a negative value. So I'm going to, I believe like negative 0.5 to 0.5 will kind of pull out some of those values. There we go. We start to have some of those values. And so we're mapping like all the way to a full roughness. We don't really want that. So I'm going to pull up on the bottom, right. To kind of punch some holes in that. And I'm, Oh, sorry, no, I want to pull up on this bottom.
and we can start to see you know like we just adding we're at trying to add in just a little bit of roughness there you know as far as getting some visual breakup and when we look between those two you'll see that there's it just helps to add you know a little bit more believability in there that like not all of it's perfect those would be like micro ripples that are causing that right that start to give us a little bit more of that breakup but just a little bit like we don't need a ton you know of, uh, max of 0.3 is probably all i want um and i can go with that now i can come back in here and i can push up my roughness and that's going to help you know set some of those those edges and you know if you're not if you feel like you can't see you can always come back in here and turn this back up to one and you're going to see really quickly like what that pattern looks like and it's good to get the pattern down correctly first right like what those micro ripples uh need to look like and i'm probably going to go like this and i'm going to lower my frequency i'm going to increase my turbulence right and so what that does is it gives me larger shapes but still keeps that high frequency detail in those by adding more lobes of turbulence and so this it's like okay cool i think i'm i think i'm kind of happy with this and i could move it around Right, I could you know offset it, you know, let's, let's offset an X by one and it's gonna move the pattern. So it's like, okay, cool. I have a little bit of control there. We kind of figure out what pattern wise feels right. I'm like, okay, I think I like that. I think I like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to use this to, you know, again, I'm gonna bring this back down to point three. Right, and check that out so now we get this nice and what's you know it's looking like noise here and you really have to let that resolve it's just kind of softening up the reflection on that water right just a little bit you know to kind of help it feel like maybe there's something you know micro stuff going on that we're not capturing that detail but you know you see already like where we've come from that's cool i think that's a little cooler where we start to get some of, some of that breakup um now we have noise patterns we can do you know all kinds of stuff in here where uh you know you could use noise patterns to make it feel like there's some skunky bits on the top right so maybe that in that section there let's do this just as a kicks and giggles um i'm gonna do another uh, fit node and i'm going to use this to drive transparency and so i'm going to use those same values negative Point two five. I'll type them in the right order today. Point five, and we'll make that zero to one. Um, I'm actually gonna make this two five. And I'm gonna plug this into my actual transparency value, right? So we have have here, and this is how much transparency is going through. So I'm gonna drive that with with a a noise pattern. So this needs to come up to probably zero. You know, we want to punch some holes in this. We actually want, you know, a little bit less. Um, let's go back up to point five. On the wrong way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, this is what I'm starting to want. 0.5, 0.25. I'm just trying to find some skunky little bits on there. All right, well, now that almost feels like foam, right? Again, if we're just doing something cheap and we're doing a still, this is going to work out pretty good where we kind of have some foam areas that we can play with. Maybe that's too much, 3.5. That's way too much foam, but but you're starting to get the idea, right, of how this, you know, this ability, you know, to to control this. And we could use this same thing to now drive our surface color, right? Well, maybe that's not foam. We want that to be be some sludge, right? And, and that's just a simple, we could start just by changing this to a value. We're going to go uh, back into that green family and darken it up pretty good. And I would want there to be some breakup in this. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to do a, another noise pattern. 
I'm just gonna throw down just the turbulent noise. I'm gonna leave it as default. Um, and now I'm going to do a color mix. Put this into my bias. My colors, I'm gonna I'm gonna take this same color that was here. So I'm gonna copy this parameter and I'm just gonna paste values. So I like that green. And then let's paste it in this one too, paste value. And now I'm gonna come in here and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna push this around and make it a little darker and take a touch of saturation. I'm gonna push a little more yellow. And now this will become my base color. And it looks like it probably will up my roughness here so I can see some of that break up a little bit better. Cool, so you can start seeing like that's creating some kind of skunky bits and maybe we're still too bright on that, you know. This could probably come down even more. I'll bring this kind of way down. And then this brighter color. Yeah, I didn't see a terrible amount of change there. So let's oh, because I plugged this in the wrong thing. <laughs> Position, not frequency. There we go. This will change that. Well, certainly not as much as I thought. That's hilarious. Well, this is, again, you could put a fit on here, right? And start playing with that range. You put a fit range on there. And we can start just saying 0.5, right? Because we're trying to find that breakup. There we go. Now we've got some skunky kind of breakup to that color, right? And then I'm going to take that this color here and I'm going to take it down a little bit too. It's just a little too, a little too bright for me. You know, something like that. We're now like, not only do we have water, right? A simple water setup. We have a very simple algae setup that we've kind of pushed through here. And that's, that's really powerful. You know, just to quickly get something that feels you know, like, oh, cool, this is doing some stuff. Like we have some things in here and it feels like water. When you look at that, you kind of have an idea of what, that, what that's trying to be. And that's, that's pretty powerful stuff. So hope this helps. This is a, you know, an easy setup to get something that looks like decent water. And uh, uh, we'll talk to you later.